I run on the field. Adrian Peterson's come out sideline. It was ashy as hell. <laughs> oh, so you can see every single muscle in his body. I'm wearing like two long sleeves, it was, and then a, a loose long sleeve outside. Cold as hell. He had no sleeves on. I was like, damn. He different. We finna, <laughs> we finna get our ass right here. <laughs> Welcome to the We All Win show, where we bring you interviews from some of the most influential people yep. in the Polynesian culture, man. I'm your host, Shane. I'm sitting here with my bro, Dante. What's happening? Yeah, man. How you feeling? How's life been for you, bro? Uh, life has been good, man. Uh, you know, it's just been me and the kids, man, going crazy. Uh, I just started a new photography business. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Congrats Shout out to, to 99 Visuals, Congrats baby. You know? Don't get at me. You need, some, yeah. you need some camera work done? Get at me and Alamogo, man. Yeah, man. Congrats to that, bro. We got a lot of things that have happened behind the scenes that we haven't really had a chance to speak on. So we'll get into that. But first and foremost, man, we got a very special guest on the couch with yes, us sir. in the studio with us, man, today, man. Yes, he's, sir. He's from the city. You know what I'm saying? He's from Long Beach, the city. You know what I'm saying? And anytime uh, some, somebody from the city comes on set, like, I got to really emphasize that because, you know, like, a lot of cities come through here, you know, and I, you know, I show love to all of them, but, you know, it's something a little special when somebody from, from, from Long Beach come through here, man. Okay, so I agree. He's from Long Beach, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he is a, a legend, you know what I'm saying? He's done a lot of great things in the culture, both personally and just for the culture as a whole, man. He's a father. Yes. He's currently serving as the assistant defensive lineman coach for the Los Angeles Chargers, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You we know. Got, we got our brother, John Timo, man. Let's get it, man. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Welcome to the show. How you feeling, bro? Man, I'm good, man. I, that's a hell of an intro, man. <laughs> I don't think I deserve that, but I appreciate it, man, being on your show and uh, just bless me with this opportunity to kind of, you know, talk stories, man. Yeah. So appreciate y'all, man. Nah, for sure. So it, it's, a, it's a pleasure having you on. And um, like we said before, we, we, we kind of been doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff, so we haven't yeah. really popped out like that. So if we're going to pop out, we got to do it in a big way. And what yeah. better way to, to do, do it like this, to, to have you on here, man? man. No way, no way. I mean, I'm a big fan of y'all show, man. Watch y'all all the time. I see how y'all evolve. So, man, big, 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 you know, I tip my hat to y'all because this is Much big love. time, Thank man. You, man. You know, man, I'm probably just having a, a media outlet to kind of share their story. And I think you guys do a hell of a job with that. So, man. It's love. Cheers, Much love, man. Thank Much you. Love. We, we, we always said that, uh, you know, um, it's important that we tell our stories. Yes. But we also own the platform that tells those stories as well because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of a lot of our stories, they get watered down or they get told in a funny way. And yeah. so, you know, like our, our whole thing is like being <laughs> being authentic, being genuine with with what we talk about. And, um, you know what I'm saying? You you had mentioned that one of our first episodes was on the desk. That that yeah. shows me that you was really tapped in. Yeah, come on, we really started on the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We really started on the desk. And, um, you know, shout out to everybody that been showing love to to us and, and to everything we've been doing, man. This shit is hard. I ain't gonna lie. This shit is hard. It, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of uh, take a lot of L's that we don't we don't show all the time. But you know, what I'm saying we keep putting our foot forward, and, and so we're back in studio, and we have a lot of great things that we want to talk to you about. But I guess where I want to start is being from the city, being from Long Beach. Um, you spent most of your life. Were you born here as well? Yeah, man. Also, oh, you you from the turf? Ooh, you were born and raised in the turf. Okay, okay. born and raised. Uh, Stomping grounds. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, not for sure. <laughs> to, to anybody that does, does, doesn't really know what Long Beach is like, could you kind of walk us through a little bit about your upbringing, what it was like growing up in Long Beach? Because you know, it it, 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 was, it was pretty it was pretty treacherous in the in the you know '90s and the early 2000s. So like, yeah. what, what was your experience yeah. like growing up in Long Beach? Man, my it was unique because I'm, I'm the youngest of four. Me and my wife. Okay. And shout out to my wife because she's from Long Beach. She's okay. From uh, born and raised in Long Beach. And so uh, I'm born in 92, youngest of four, like I mentioned. And obviously, uh, inner city. Yeah. Very competitive. Uh, very competitive people. Prideful about their territory. Yeah. Yep. And obviously with the government, how they place us, Long Beach is very diverse because you see a lot of different peoples in there. Cambodians, Asians, mm -hmm. Mexicans, uh, Samoans, Tongans. I'm uh, not trying to leave anybody out, but, you know, we were everywhere. Even, you know, obviously you got blacks and whites. Uh, but growing up, man, we were uh, a lot of different places in the city. We started off on the east side in Cambodia town. Okay. Moved to, uh, this is from my timeline, not, uh, Pine and 20th. Was there for a long mm -hmm. time. And then moved to 56th and Atlantic on the north side. Then moved to Compton. 
the Park Village. So we was there for a little bit. Uh, man, growing up in Long Beach, from what I can remember, it was uh, gang infested. Yeah. Uh, drugs. Mm-hmm. The aftermath of, of the crack epidemic in the mm-hmm. 80s. Yep, yep. Um, alcohol, a yeah. huge reliever. In our city, you don't see a lot of uh, places where people can go as an outlet for mental health yeah. or therapy. Yep. Or you don't see that, but you see a lot of liquor stores. And that's where a lot of people went in terms of uh, uh, an outlet to kind of, because one, it was cheaper. You can get a 40 for a few <laughs> bucks. And, shout yeah. out. and you can go there multiple times. Yeah. And so that's what, in my experience, a lot of uh, my people that look like me specifically use in terms of an avenue of releasing certain, you know, anger, certain yeah. tension, certain issues. Yeah. And obviously a lot of other things came out of from about that. Um, so growing up, those are the things that kind of affected our, our neighborhoods. And then obviously the, from the positive side, sports was huge. Yeah. And if you went past the liquor store, you saw a baseball field, a soccer field, a park. You saw huge lights where there was a sports going on. And for me, uh, that shine brighter than a liquor store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so uh, um, I went the sports way. And so that's why for me, coaches and teachers – were huge in my life on on top of my family. My parents, obviously, they get all the credit for who I am today. But the coaches and teachers, man, real gangsters in our community. True. Because they are pillars in our community. Yeah. They are they're the glue to hold us together. And I can remember every single teacher that I had in middle school from second grade, Miss Miranda, Miss Miranda, third grade, Miss Gonzalez. Who I Shout out to the to. teachers, yeah. man. He, he on, got man. a second, third grade, that, yeah. In fourth grade, Miss <laughs> Padeda, who was like real cool. She ended up getting married. She changed her name. And then fifth grade, Miss Black. Damn. And in sixth grade, I had all these different teachers, Miss Lacano, Mr. Higgins, all these people that uh, changed my life, Miss Cassell. And then uh, got into eighth grade, Connie Granieri, who was like, she, she became family now. She's actually the son of uh, the godmother of my oldest son. Damn. And that's how close I am with people because I don't like to burn bridges. I mm-hmm. like to build our family up, and especially with the people who helped me along the way. And then the coaches, like going up uh, into – AAU basketball, Dennis Banks, uh, Harry Ponce, Manuel, and then I got it to uh, high school, Thomas Barnes, like family. I'm talking about Damn. family who was like, hey, whatever you need, I got you, uh, where I was in a bad spot. You know what I'm saying? So those are a lot of different people. If I miss anybody, I apologize, but well, these are just pillars, pillars in, in that community, man. I, I love I love that, Oops, man. You you literally gave flowers from when you was a- when he was a child, all the way up to oh, where you're at right now, you know what I mean. He went yeah. up in levels, and 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 you and you recognize what what they, what impact they had on you at every age. And I love that, man. I love that. It was like, man, man that's awesome. I mean, I got to, man, and that's because you said what's my experience was like. That was my experience. Yeah, you know, what I mean, I went past the liquor store, went past the smoke, went past the you know the the substance, and I found the field. You know, what I mean, I found the court, but I was able to kind of release some of the things that I was going through, through my athletic ability and the people who kind of like taught me, but those are the ones I kind of try to carry on with me. And then uh, just try to make a new avenue for what's different and bring light to what's actually the best part of our city, man. And so I just wanted to highlight that through my life, through my story. And one, man, I appreciate you guys having this outlet, yeah, which is real gangster, man, yeah. for us poly <laughs> community, man. Hey, one thing I want to say, though, because you have brought it up, because I never really said it on camera before. I always tell people this all the time, is uh, Island Mogul started on the iPhone. <laughs> like, legit. Like, you got to think about it. Like, everything that looks super clean, we did it off of a phone. Yeah. So, Whoa, like, man. I'm very, very big on uh, we going to get it how we how we can. You know, we got, we got equipment man. now, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But at first, it, we didn't know what we were doing. So, man, anybody can do mud. it. Anybody can do it. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. Believe yeah. me. Straight anybody can mud. do it. Anybody should do it. Like, yes. just because you don't have this or that. Like, if you got a great idea and, you know, you got a little bit of hustle, shit, you can, you can get some traction going. And with social media and technology, man, there's no excuse to why you can't get whatever's in your head out to the world. Yes, so, man. That's, you know. How about that, man? That's straight out the mud. Yeah, yeah straight man. out the mud, man. Yeah, we still got a little bit of mud on us right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like- We're trying uh, to clean up right now. Yeah. We're trying to. We're trying no, to. No, man. People need to see that. Yeah. 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 Nah, it's love, man. And, and like, it's important that we have these type of conversations because our, our paths are very similar. We just we just chose different things. But, yeah. you know, we, we were blinded by the 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 liquor stores, the guns, the, 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 the gangs, all that stuff. We just chose a different route. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, not everybody- not everybody chose the route that we chose. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And there's a lot of people that in our, in our culture, family, friends that we know, we grew up with. Isn't it crazy the people that you grew up with 
you play ball with, you know what I'm saying, went to the park with. And as you fast forward years down the road, you're like, damn, bro, we went totally different directions. <laughs> yeah, that's well, crazy, man. You Every know? single time I see that, man. And, but the thing about me was like, fear was the driving force, like, in my in my life, like mm. on top of the, obviously the people, but when I was on my own, fear was a huge part of like what kind of directed me. And you know, I'm a believer, and so I do believe that God kind of placed that uh, that emotion, that feeling, whatever you want to call it, because I wasn't about that life, was yeah. like that gangster life wasn't wasn't for me, because I seen some gangster things, you know what yeah. I mean, with things around. I seen it, and people talk about because people like they they made it cool, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. They try to make it to a brand where uh, it was a it was a recruitment process where kids was like hell yeah I'm trying to be from yada yada yada's hood yeah but they would clock out as soon as school's over yeah you know so I'm like nah, being a gangster is a lifestyle yeah for and sure. it wasn't one that I wasn't about because I seen obviously the the negative effects of it um, there was really no positive other than that family community that you get if something go down because everybody was trying to be about the drama but man I want I wasn't about that life was because. Yeah. Man, seeing, hearing those things, you know, a lot of PTSD growing up as a kid from being in the city, hearing these these firefighters, and they, you know, you ain't just hearing them pass by, they pulling up on you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? These choppers is right above your house. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different when you kind of go through that. And I got these bookmarks in my life because of such. And so fear, man, you know, you know say what you want about fear, but it was a driving force in my life to get me to where I am today because... See the alleyways, but fear is like, man, go left and go this yeah. way. Then you find out something happened there. So you knew from an early age that they, that ain't the path that you want to go down. You, yeah, you knew like, this is, I'm going to go this way. Yeah, man. And you mentioned people in your lives that were pouring into you that were keeping you on, the, on this path, right? Yeah, man. So uh, I want to touch on your high school, a little bit about your high school background, because you know you, you went to Long Beach, Jordan, yep. which is a, 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 a very notorious uh, school back in the day for just the rivalries they would have mm -hmm. with, I went to Poly, so you know, it, was a lot, it was a lot of tension there between, between the two high schools, but uh, at the, you know, in the, we're talking like mid-2000s here, so yep. this is like at the height of gangbanging, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on, and um, you were also just like killing it on the field, man, like would you... <laughs> Punter, we were like a kicker, freaking quarterback. Would you play like multiple positions at high school, right? Yeah, man, played a couple different positions. I'm not trying to brag, but <laughs> no, nah, talk your shit, bro. Talk man. Your shit, man. <laughs> I was all over the field. Tell him, yeah. tell him. We was limited, so hey, if you could do more, you get to do more. Yeah, and I was able to kick. I'm not a good kicker, Oops, but nobody was willing to do it. You yeah, know, we had a soccer I stepped player. To the plate. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We had a soccer player come try out, and he was like, "Man, you get hit." Man, I was straight. You know what I mean? <laughs> But the dude was kicking like 56 yards. And I'm like, damn. So, man, it was like, I'll do it. You know what I mean? So I played kicker, punter, receiver growing up. Uh, the early years, uh, as freshman, sophomore. We didn't have no quarterback. And then I was like, all right, I'll do it. Hated it. Yeah. <laughs> Hated it. But, you know, it helped out the team. <laughs> it helped yeah. out the team, man. I mean, being being in high school, I feel like that's like the critical age for a lot of, a lot of football players where – you're either going to go, you're going to lock in and, and really put your foot forward and go, you know, all the way with it, or you're going to fall off on the wayside. I mean, college a little bit too, but I feel like like the first test you get as a football player is like really high school. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yep. Because what was it that kind of kept you grounded? Because it's, it's one thing when you're the man in your city, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's saying your name, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're, you, you, you put on for your, your city, you're, yep. you're putting on for your culture, you're putting on for your school. Um, a lot of distractions come with that. Like, how did you stay focused on, on, on being a professional? Man, that's a hell of a question, man. Hell of distractions. Yeah. You know what I mean? We all know. And I think I'm not, you know, I'm not unique enough to not go through distractions. I'm some more, full some more. So yeah. we we have our own issues in our community. Yes. And then we got some some great things that come out of us. So mm -hmm. naturally you got uh things that go on in your neighborhood. Obviously, we talked about with the gang, gang banging, drugs and alcohol. Those distractions are real. Yeah. Um and then we had our own family issues where we were just trying to figure out life, man. My parents weren't obviously in the best circumstances as a family growing up. So we were just trying to figure out what's the best move. Like, should we move here? Should we go there? So dealing with those stuff. But, uh, man, you know, God is blessing with, like, the, this power of focus mm. from such a young, young. I don't know how, but I was always aware about what was good and what was bad. And in terms of making the, the right decision, I'm not saying I always made the right decision, but this power of focus I was able to have since I was young, man, it was it kind of kept me kept me in line, man. And then, two, like it's crazy because all these people that were 
in my family, friends that was, you know, game banging or whatnot. Yep. They, I don't know, they, they, you know, they always kind of see the ones that are like, damn, man, he gonna, he gonna be some, and they would always make sure, like, keep him away, keep him away. You know what I mean? Hey, you trying to try this? Nope. Go this way. Yeah. Hey, we out here kicking it. Nope. Stay inside. You know what I mean? Hey, there's drinks out here. Nope. Stay out there. Hey, there's game banging out here. You know, get far away from it. So those people like that in my community, um, that in my family that I was able to do that, and then having that awareness of what's real, what's not. You know, making the best decision for me. Uh, I don't know. College wasn't really like, uh, like achievement for me. Like it was like a dream. It was, yeah. it was like, like NFL was whatever. NFL was a TV show. Yeah. Like oh, we ain't never getting that. But college was like, man, maybe you know, maybe because nobody ever did it in my family. First so, one, right? First one, man. First, one, first one. And so it was like, oh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But if you don't, hey, go get a job and provide for the family. Yeah. And so I've always had this power focus where I was able to kind of figure out what's the best move for me and 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 the family to to protect that that last name as much as possible. And then and then I just went from there, man. I just, just try to grow wiser. And then again, the, the those teachers that I mentioned are still in my life today. Yeah. The people like Thomas Barnes, who's my high school coach, still keep me in line, you know what I mean? Obviously, as I got older uh, in high school, I met my wife in high school. And so she kept me in line. She real gangster. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she held it down for me. And so, man, I always got people. And I always say, man, when you see me, there's a bunch of people that kept me in line. And, mm. and somebody uh, said that when you see me, like, it's because I stood on the shoulders of giants. For sure. And those people yep. are the ones like, who uplifted me. And that's why you see me at whatever this you want to call it. Um, but I've always remembered, like, the people who try to help me. So, um, man, when you see my name, those are the ones who, who really get all the credit, you know. Respect. Those are the ones who get all the credit, especially that's, my wife, yo. She gangsta. <laughs> that, that, that's dope, man. And it's important that uh that you acknowledge that. I think sometimes, especially when you experience a little bit of success, it's very easy to point to yourself and, and say, you know what I'm saying, I, yeah, I did this, man. but, you know, you know, as, as quickly as you rise, man, you, you can quickly fall too. Yeah. So, yep. so you got to be thankful for everything that, that you experience. And I kind of want to talk about your college career because I know that going to U University of Washington, right? Um, yeah. You didn't have a you didn't have a like a a, a smooth start to to your college career, right? Can you talk about about your experience when you first got there and, and leading up to it? Man, that was hard, man. Uh, nobody went to college. Hell, nobody left the nest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They leave for spurts and come back. Yeah, dude. this one I wasn't coming back for years, and so when I left, it was first one University of Washington offer. I thought it was way in Washington, D.C. I'm like, damn. <laughs> oh, I'm, about to, I'm about to see the White House, uh, meet the president. <laughs> I was like, hold on, man. That's on the other side of the country. Yeah. Let alone, I don't even know how far that is in terms of flight hours, but it was like a two-hour flight. And I was yeah. like, woo, straight. But man, I, man, when I left, it was hard. I'm a mama's boy. Yeah. So when I left, I text my mom like, man, I love you. And my wife was walking with my mom. She said she broke down in the street, in the middle of the street, just started crying. Damn. And I mean, I was like a week, I was, I was literally crying in my bed, like, damn. Just thinking like, damn, is this worth it? <laughs> yeah. Like, I can go get a job, you know what I'm saying? Trying to figure it out. And that's the beauty in our culture, I mean, and then because we were so tight as a family, that's kind of like the fault. It's like when one leaves the nest, man, it makes it real hard. Yeah. Especially if he's going on his own. So that was me. And then when I went, but me and my bro, man, whose family, Princeton, Fui Moana, we call him Bobo. Man, we went together. As a shout out to Bobo, because you know, mm -hmm. he was one of the first two. Uh, we went together. So that helped out, man. And yeah. his auntie finally looked out for us and she helped us out moving up there. But man, when I tell you I wanted to come back and quit those, I was ready to quit. And my parents was cool with it because they was like, just come back home, figure yeah. it out. But then we all know it's like, this ain't the best thing for you. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, when I went there, I gray shirted, which means they uh, delay your enrollment because I injured my knee in high school. Um, and so I, I ended up being for the next year's class in 2011. And then I moved to linebacker. So I was playing quarterback in high school, moved to linebacker after the injury because, you know, all the luau's and <laughs> graduation yeah. parties, man. Yeah. You start grubbing and next thing you know, man, I'm in a linebacker stance. <laughs> Not taking a snap when the center. And so that was kind of like the the whole transition from QB, whatever, whatever, into a linebacker at the University of Washington. And then me and Oos Bobo went there. Man, he helped you. He helped, he helped me out big time, man. Cause, you know, us polys, we gotta go and we gotta have something at least there. Something yeah. Yeah. we can, you know, stay connected to. Yep. And and for me, it was me and him for the, you know, the next four years. 
And so that was that transition getting there, man. man. That was rough, boy. That was leaving Ness. That was hard, man. I how, get go ahead, go ahead. how was how was like how was your uh how was the mental how was your mental during that injury going into um into into ball? You know, man, there? you know what? I was I was talking to my family, like mental issues don't necessarily exist in our culture, man. Mm. We don't I shouldn't say it doesn't exist. We don't address it. We do not. Get up. Yeah. You know, stop crying. I do that to my son and, uh, you know, wipe it off, dust it off, you know, walk it off. And, man, mental illness, mental health issues, because of those words and the way we grow up is to be be strong, be tough. And the beauty of, our, of us as a family is we have this strong community of people that we can rely on. Yeah. The only problem is because we're so deep in numbers, some people can kind of straight off because the numbers are so big. Yeah. And so some people can be missed out or some things. Some, we have plenty of blind spots. And one is mental health issues. Yeah. And does it exist? Absolutely. I do think it does. And so for me, when I had that injury, again, nobody really played or got injured as serious as I did. And it was one of those like, man, get up and walk it off. Yeah. You're going to be straight. Yeah. But then I didn't know what an ACL ligament was and that it takes you a whole year to kind of get a cracking, let alone I was playing without insurance. So I couldn't even afford that. Damn. And by the grace of God, I had a surgery up in Cedar Sinai, which is in Beverly Hills, all these big time doctors. And then I had a therapy that I couldn't afford. And by the grace of God, I was able to have that. And so, uh, man, dealing with it, it was hard. It was, and so I ate, <laughs> <laughs> I ate, I ate a lot of food, but uh, going through it, man, one, you don't really have the guidance. You just got to rely on the people that kind of went through it. And then you obviously know and kind of feel you're the best doctor in your own body, Yeah. obviously. But, uh, man, that mental aspect, it was hard. it's hard to explain, man, because, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's unique. It's one, like, uh, I couldn't relate to anybody else. I feel like I couldn't because, uh, you know, I wasn't really close to as much people as I thought I was in terms of having that connection of how an injury can affect you, uh, an athlete, mentally, you yeah. know, where – you playing a sport, and or hey, just take us some more, man. Ability to to provide. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's hard, man. I want to touch on one thing. Uh, football is a very performance based sport, meaning fact. You know, uh, get the job done. We don't want to hear the excuses. We don't want to yada yada. That's right. A fact. Uh, and so when you're doing your job, you're getting a lot of love. You're getting, but this, the moment you stop doing your job, or you or you're incapable of doing your job, it's like all right. We don't care about you anymore, right? Man, man, that's a fact. Yeah, so can you talk about um, just the highs and the lows that come with the sport of football as a player, that that emotional roller coaster you experience, you know what I'm saying? You're the man. Everybody loves you when you're scoring touchdowns man. or getting big hits, right? But the moment you can't do that, it's like, who cares about you? Man, that's that's 100% of those, man. And that's why it's always important to have, like, somebody, some some people to remind you of who you are. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because obviously when we get the lights on, it, it feels good. It was, when people are saying your name, people are following, your, your followers are going up, it feels so good because you feel love. But you know that there's no substance behind mm -hmm. that. Cause people behind it, you don't even know them. Yeah. But it feels good that in this like whole metaverse, like you're loved by people that you ain't never met before. And it's all good until any adversity strikes or you're not impressing them on the field. Now they turn on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it's important to have somebody to remind you of that. Like my family, obviously my wife, I talked about her. She's the one that kind of keep me grounded. But football is results-based. It's what you do for me now. Like, yeah. It's all about the bottom line. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to play in the NFL. And, bro, if you're not available, man, you're just wasting your time and everybody else's time, and they'll just get rid of you. And so – uh you just gotta one, you gotta remember who you are. And two, like for me, I just always made sure that I was available to play um and give it my all and then move on, bro. And just move on. Isn't it isn't it crazy how uh in football, you know what I'm saying, success or even in life, you know, yeah. uh success can can almost like mask the the shit that you're going through or the mental health, right? Because success is such a is such a it's a it's a great thing, but it can be a distracting thing as yeah. well. It's like Blinding. like yeah, like whatever issues you have going on, you know, you know, everybody's saying your name or your whatever, the the fame or the money, whatever, that's great. So let's focus on that, right? And yeah. so you can almost trick yourself into thinking that 
you don't have shit going on or maybe there's things in your life that you don't need to address yep. because everything's going so well. How did you find the balance between, you know, embracing your athletic abilities, right? And, and taking pride in that, but at the same time, realizing that, you know, that's not who you are. Like, you're not defined by that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, how did you- I'm how, this. Yeah, how did, how did, you, yeah, how did yeah. you come to that realization? Man, uh, just again, when you're done with work, when you're done with whatever provides, man, go and get the hell away from it. Mm. And I'm, I do a terrible job of that because being a coach, being a, like you said, it's a results business. So there's a pressure that comes with it because you got to uphold that standard or your ass is fired. Yeah. You know, and that's the bottom line. But when your ass is at home, man, be home. You know what I'm saying? So me, I'm a father, I'm a husband, and that's what's most important to me is my family. And so if, whenever I'm at home, and I'm, when I tell you I struggle with this, this is real. I struggle with that. Yeah. Leave work at work. Yeah. Be home. It's you know hard. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. the, the ministry of presence is huge. Mm. And if your ass is, if your body is there, but your mind is somewhere else, man, you wasting time. And it's only a matter of fact, because my kids do a good job reminding me, too, yeah. man. Because my son would tell me, you ain't even paying attention. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> off the river, like, I'm trying to show you something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like that, that, like that's yeah. that's a sign of like you ain't there. Mm. Yeah. Or hey, babe, I need you to help me with this. And yeah, she, and then I'll be like, man, I don't think you told me that, babe. Like, well, because you ain't paying attention. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, it's something that we gotta do. Is when you done with whatever you're doing, like, be the hell home. And you know, it's funny. I had a, my pastor tell me to preach on Sunday, and I'm trying to. I'm probably talking too much, but he, <laughs> you know, he's preaching on Father's Day. Okay. And I was like, man, what the hell am I going to talk about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was like, one, be present. Two, you got to speak life into your kids. And three, love them unconditionally. But one, you, if you can't do two or three, if you ain't doing one, you yeah. be present. Yeah. So as much as you can, like, get away from those things that, whatever, you got to pro provide. That's the country we live in. Um, that's the reality of life. You got to provide. But, man, you got to make sure that their priorities are in order. And yeah. and when I say that, I'm saying that because that's what I got to keep doing. You know right. what I mean? And that's for me. Yeah. That's for me. So um, if I could keep that balance, man, I think I'd be all right. I think yeah. I'd be all right. I mean, that's the irony of it all is like you could be a success on the field and be a, a failure off of it, right? What? And we see that a lot with so many athletes where, you know, they they get the the accolades, they get the, the success, they break the records, but off the field, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some of them acting like a fool. Yeah, like, <laughs> and, and, and it's like it's like they don't know how to, like you said, they don't know how to flip the switch off. Like mm. I think I think you become so consumed by your fame, your success, that you lose sight of what's most important, right? Family time and and being a good person, right? Uh, those things get overshadowed by the fame and success. So no, that's, that's real loose. That's real shit, man. You, like I said, I I love everything you shared, and um, you know, I think for us too is like especially when you're young and you're trying to get it. You know, what I'm saying you're trying to get it out the mud. It takes a lot of sacrifice and time. And so you, it's hard to flip that switch. You it's hard. So, you know so honed in. Yeah, you so, so, you so, so zoomed in on trying to get it. You said it. That's right. Yeah, you yeah, so, in. But that's a great reminder, man, like to be present when you need it the most. Because your, your kids, our kids don't care about your accolades. They don't care about yeah. MVP. They don't care. They just care about, is you finna play Legos or what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's it. <laughs> that's it. Those, you gonna play cash with me? Yeah. Like, yeah. You right. Yeah, you're exactly kids, right. Kids yeah. ground you, man. Yeah, kids no, ground sure. you, man. Like I, I, I've been seeing a lot of uh, of my peers have kids now, and like I, I'm seeing some of them, like man, they wild, you know, yeah. they wild people. But I know that yeah. when you have a child like that, it'll settle you down. You know, it'll 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 ground you in the way of of you need it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, I believe in like the kids never needed you. You needed the kid, bro. You what? needed the kid, man. That's a word right there, man. Yeah, that's a word. So, so you're 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 at University of Washington. Um, did, did the thought of NFL ever, now that you made it to that next level, did the thought of NFL ever cross your mind? Like, man, I could actually make it to the next level or? Yeah, man. It was it was one of those like, man, the opportunity presented itself. Obviously, uh, like I was a, I played for four years, like yep. a significant amount of time. And when you do so, then you kind of get on the radar of scouts and whatnot and whatever. And, and man, it was there. The opportunity was there. I seen people uh, uh, like, who was who played a lot? Who didn't play a lot? Was able to try out, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah! Let me just see what this was about." Yeah, and man, when I tell you I'm been blessed, man, is that year when I was le I, when I left uh, when I was eligible. To, uh, it was my senior year, 2014. It was Shaq Thompson. It was Danny Shelton. 
there was a Haole Kika. And I say those three because those was big names. And then yeah. it was Marcus Peters. Oh, sure. That's okay. three first rounders. And then my boy Haole Kika, he was supposed to be a first rounder. He was a second rounder. So they brought a lot of publicity to the to the uh, our uh, pro day. Yeah. I wasn't invited to the combine. So pro day was my day to shine. Those those four names brought so many scouts to the to the workout. And then boom, here I am. So everybody came to see them, but I was also part of the workout. Mm. So when it was time for the linebackers, me and Shaq Thompson was doing it, who who's my brother, who's family, man. And he was like, man, because he was supposed to work out as a running back, as a, as a safety, but he did the linebacker uh, so he could do it with me. Okay. Because he knew that scouts was going to be able to watch. Obviously, uh, he's got to do his own thing, but uh, we was able to do the pro day. And I mean, I did whatever, but I was able to have a few eyes kind of check me out. And then, you know, I had all these scouts calling me, hey, man, you know, we, we want you as a priority free agent or, hey, at the end of the draft, we might take you, so stay available. It was all bullshit. Yeah. Uh, but when the day of the draft happened, uh, the Bears called me when they was done with their picks. And that year in 2015, they didn't draft no linebackers. It was a brand-new staff. John Fox was the head coach. Uh, they had two inside linebackers that never played a position before and then never drafted a linebacker. Like you gotta understand it was when when I say like God has blessed me, like the stars was aligning for me to have an opportunity to play in the NFL. Like one, all the publicity came because other people. Two, I go to the team where they didn't draft any linebackers, didn't even pay no free agents. They had two linebackers that never played a position before, inside linebacker, and then a brand new staff. So everybody was on a like, let me see what this guy was about. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, bro, let's go. Yeah. And the Bears called me. They gave me a uh, five thousand. It was signing bonus. I was like, "Hey, I'll, I'll pay for free. Yeah. I'm gonna come out there and show me what's up." Yeah. And so I go up there. Oh, I go in there and they give people numbers. They gave me number sixty three. It was, come on, man, <laughs> disrespectful. Sixty three. It was inside linebacker. That's how I knew. I was like, man, I ain't supposed to make this damn team. Yeah. But, man. And, and numbers just, are important to football players, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> 63 is for offensive linemen only. I was like, man, he could have gave me 69. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> any other number who's 63? Because there was two of us that came in, the other dude at 47. Yeah. So I was like, oh, they like this dude. And so, man, I'm peeping stuff out. Then all the uh, rookie linebackers in the basement in Chicago. All over downstairs, it was yeah. all the first round or whatever. There's a huge sign that says the only way to go is up. And I'm like, man, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 bro, they put all of us downstairs. Oh, so, like, after practice, we got to go downstairs and all the veterans are upstairs. But I used to have 63 rolled up my jersey in practice, you know, so I could hide the number. Yeah, little. yeah, yeah. They was like, hey, Rook, because nobody knew my name. They didn't even know me. It was like, they didn't really, not, not many people knew me like that. Hey, bro, put your jersey there. Like, put your jersey. I was like, come on, man, chill out, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like walking around practice, bro. Everybody was just laughing. And then, ooh, just making plays. You know, just practice making plays. One thing about me in the game of football was like, I'm very cerebral. Every, like, whatever. You mm -hmm. lift weights, you faster. But was, when we get on the field, I know what you're about to do. Mm. Like, there's an awareness that I like, that I put my game, I invested more into my game than. The field stuff, like running fast, jumping high. Yeah. I couldn't do that. But the cerebral part of it was, was like what separated me from everybody else. So that was why I was able to make a ton of plays. And then, like, later on, I got promoted to – not promoted. But they gave me number 53, which represents, like, you got the last roster spot. Yeah. Ended up making a team. It was, Damn. And it was kind of a cool story. I know I'm talking too much. But no, we want to hear, oh, hear the story. We want to yeah. hear the story. man. I was like, damn, this is disrespectful, man. But – it's cool because I can tell a lot of people, like, bro, it don't matter. Like, yeah. Get your ass over there, get right, and then just roll. Like, cool thing about the NFL is I hear Kobe talked about when he got to the NBA, it was a lot easier. Because once people get there, they get complacent real easy. And for me, I was like, hell yeah. So you this, coming for a spot. Yeah. What? You coming for that spot. Hungry. Come on, man. They didn't know how hungry I was. Like, I was already hungry. I had a drive. But then 63 was like confirmation of, like, they don't value me. Yeah. And so I was like... All right, let's see what's happening. So, man, it was like, who is this 63 dude with long hair and running down on kickoff? And I'm like, man, this is bullshit. <laughs> but, yeah. hey, ended up making the team, and that's that's my story with 63. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of lot of great things within that story that I – and I, I know I want to touch on just one of them, but uh, 
I guess, what is it inside of you that allowed that? Uh, it's almost like you refuse to, like, if 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 this is the cards that you've been dealt, you know, people respond differently. Some people be like, well, these are the cards I've been dealt. Fuck it, I guess I'm not meant to be here, yeah, I, yeah. you know. But you didn't have that quit in you. You you have something inside of you that's saying, like, all right, y'all see me this way, but I'm about to show y'all. Man. So, like what could you kind of walk me through mentally? What do you yeah. how do you process adversity? I guess how do you how do you prepare? Yeah, man. For me, it's like it was never, it's never about me. It was for the longest, like I bought into that. Well, for the longest, as much as I can control what I can control, it was always about like before I had kids, before I met my wife, it was about my parents. Mm. Okay, what can I get them to get the hell out of these situations? My mom is not a citizen, so she would always tell me we would drop them off, man, you lucky, I can't work, you know, and because I don't have papers. But she'd be out there hustling, you know? She'd be out there working these three jobs under the table, you know, trying to make sure we get meals and stuff like that. And and then I got kids. And then me and my wife, we got kids. And it was like, it's about them. It's always about them. So I was able to kind of make that uh, external, like, point of view of myself. Like, yo, like, are you about you or are you about them? Yeah. You know, try to make it bigger than myself. And so, like, that, that kind of helped me, gave me that – like continue this power of focus. Uh, but again, man, I got my faults. Like there's some times where I, you know, I need to be reminded like, yo, yo, chill out, bro. You need to get back to yeah. what's most important. But that's that's what drive me, man. Mm. It's, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. I mean, shit, you made it to the league, which is for so many of us, like the the dream, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> to, to be able to make it. Could you Could you walk me through what it was like Putting on a jersey, walking out, no, walking out the, t- the walking out the tunnel for the, for your first NFL game. Man, we we played the Dolphins my preseason game, first preseason. But like it didn't hit me that that one like preseason didn't really hit me because it was like well, preseason ain't nothing. Yeah, like, these are I'm playing against dudes I played in college, so we straight. Yeah, but a uh, first preseason game when I when it, uh, usually the veterans play like the first half. Back then in the preseason game, uh, 2015, and then I got to play third quarter. My first drive it was, boom! I get a pick. Damn! I, mean, first I was like top three of the sports center. I remember somebody saying like, "Yo, she made sports center. You number three because I kind of tipped it and yeah. did all this." And I was like, "Damn, bro!" Every and then everybody started to know my name. Like, "Oh, damn, you good? Yeah. That's that guy. <laughs> yeah, he had number six. We didn't recognize you." <laughs> but. Man, that's that's kind of what it's, it didn't really hit me until I made so I made the team initially, but uh, week I think it was fourteen is when I actually started a game um, in two thousand fifteen. We was out of the playoffs, and then uh, the other dudes we weren't performing well, so they was like, "All right, it's preseason again. Let's see what we got in the young guys." So they was like, "Hey, you starting this week, two thousand fifteen?" Was and we was playing the uh, Minnesota Vikings. Oh, Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson. Peterson. Oh, this man. is still like he was right at the end of Adrian Peterson. Yeah, and so, but they was like, "You gonna start this week?" And I was like, "Oh, hey, it's it's real. I'm yeah. here." So I was locked in. But when they told me that, I was like, "It's about damn time, man! Yeah. I've been ready." Like I was able to kind of, and I'm not trying to brag, but I was like, "Yo, I could help this team. Like, yeah. I could help this team because our system was very complex." But I played it in college. So the dudes that were playing the position, it was kind of new to them. Yeah. And then they was like, you're going to start this week. And then I walk on the field, dudes, and that's when I was like, damn, it's real. So I'm on the field, boom, what they call base. I run on the field. Adrian Peterson's come on the sideline, dudes. Ashy as hell. <laughs> oh, so you can see every single muscle in his body. I'm wearing like two long sleeves, dudes, and then a, a loose long sleeve outside. Cold as hell, he had no sleeves on. I was like, damn. He different. We finna, <laughs> we finna get our ass with right here. <laughs> but he walked on the field, Lewis, and he, I was like, yo, this is, all right. Then everything, all at once, just kind of like, shoo, came at me like, bro, you need, you better stop tripping, bro. Lock in. You're yeah. right. Man, played a hell of a game that game, Lewis. Uh, I mean, it never really happens, but it was like, yo, this guy's the defensive player of the game, you know, because he had uh, 11 tackles, two TFLs. It was, and it was Adrian Peterson, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I watched this dude yeah. run yeah. through people, yeah. and I'm out here tackling this dude. And so that's when it was like, all right, bro, I can do this. Damn. I can do this, bro. Ooh, hey. Damn. I like Damn, that confirmation yeah, right that's, there. That's what? I like that. That's I was dope. like, man, I can do this. 
I met him with this dude. You, you could hear this. I was like, yo, that's this dude running the ball. That's how hard he run. And I'm like, man, I just hope that he don't get going. And that was my plan. It's like, I, I know where the runs are going. It's like, get him early. It was, if I can get him early, <laughs> I yeah. have a chance to stop this horse, man. Because this dude was like, obviously, we know how strong he was. Yeah. But I was like, man, I ain't trying to be embarrassed <laughs> and get ran over and be on his highlights for the rest of my life. But that's when it was like, all right, I think I belong here, man. Bro, what, what, did you ever have any, uh, what, was your, what, was your, what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Like that moment, like, whether, whether it happened as a rookie, but like, like that. You here now, like you either got put on, like you know, you got you got you got you just man. ran over, or maybe yeah. like there's some, some moment where you're like, Yeah, you're welcome to the NFL moment. Bro, I man, you know, my career was short. I only played like three and a half years. I ain't never really got like ran over. I was already big enough. Yeah. But like that first game versus AP was my welcome to the NFL. Cause like again, nobody knew who I was. Like, and then bro, that was like, bro, you balling out here. Like who the hell is this dude? Like why would and then every it was kind of making noise and traction in our building. Like damn, why the hell this dude ain't playing? Yeah, you know what I mean. And and the thing was, it wasn't about like I was making tackles and stuff like that. It was like like I was calling out the plays. Like I knew what they was about to do and telling mm -hmm. everybody like this is about to happen. Yeah. So that was like my most welcome to the NFL moment. Uh, again, my career wasn't wasn't long, but in practice, you know, we used to be smacking dudes, and you yeah. know, I would come and you know. We do goal line drills, and that was my drill loose because I obviously in space, you know what I mean? I was limited. Yeah. But in the A and B gaps, you know what I'm saying? I, I was able to kind of match that energy. And so we was able to kind of hear people. They was able to hear me in that drill. But uh, for the most part, my that was it, that first yeah. game. It was, yeah. um, so you had, you, had, you had a positive welcome to the, welcome to the NFL. Yeah, 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 I, yeah I guess yeah. you could say so, man. Yeah. My career wasn't that long enough to be like, man, I got ran over and stuff. <laughs> So, so let's let's transition into I guess the next stage of your yep. career. Moving and moving. I know there's other things, but I kind of want to want to shift <coughs> shift gears to talk about um, becoming a coach and, yeah. and, and tapping into that side of your game. So, you you end your time with with the Bears, and you do a little bit of a, was it a, a American Alliance football yeah, league, bro. right? AFL, the AFL. Um, sometime there, talk talk a little bit about that that little that that well, stint there. Oh, so 2018, I got cut. So my, here's my story. It was on that. I got cut because you know they this this you know this is I do by the name of Khalil Mack. <laughs> yeah. They traded me here, me you know one for one swap. I'm lying, bro. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so they cut me and then they bring him in. Okay. And that was that. So 2008, it wasn't like they cut me for him, but they, right. they cut me. I didn't make the team. Yeah. So that was uh, and then uh, 2019, I'm trying to figure out my life. It was, do I still want to play? I was like, I was band aids up. Just trying to figure out, but I felt like I could play, but I was hurt. Mm. And transition phase, like, man, you know, what do I do next? I've always wanted to coach, but, man, is it too early to move on? I don't want to regret nothing. So uh, AFL presented itself, which was a spring league that we all know what happened at the end of it. But there was a team of Salt Lake City Stallions who was a coach that uh, coached at the University of Washington when I was there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Told the coach, the head coach, Derek, Dennis Erickson, about – uh, me being on the street, it was week four of the season. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. And I went there and I played three weeks. So you came mid-season. Yeah. Mid-season. Yeah. Because I was still trying to figure out, like, if yeah. you I want to play, I had too much pride to play in that because I was like, I was just in the NFL. You want yeah. me to go to this league? And, you know, you got to humble yourself a little bit. So I, I did it anyways. And I played for three weeks. And they were playing, like, 7K again, a game. I was like, all right, I'll do it. I'll try it. And, yeah. bro, the league folded. Yeah. You know, the whole time going, I'm trying to ask God, like, man, I just need a sign. Like, is it time to move on? It was God folded the whole league. <laughs> Damn. It's I was over. like, all right, that's going to be as loud and clear as it can be right there. Yeah. And so, like, when that happened, I was like, all right, it's time to move on. Then I got it. I've always wanted to be a coach because of the teachers and coaches that I named. Mm -hmm. Those people impacted my life. So, I was like, I'm going to do that. I knew I wanted to do that. I just didn't know when. And then uh, we was in San Diego, US, University of San Diego. I was there for like a couple of days. I was really there for like a few weeks, but officially for two days because, uh, you know, whatever happened. But I was there on a free basis. I was like, I'll come. I'm a volunteer. I'll, I'll do it for free. And then the University of Washington called my old, uh, obviously my alma mater, but there was a coach that kind of looked out for me. And then uh, he taught me about He told me about an interview and an opportunity there. So I was like, I'm out. I'm going to go do that because they pay you. Mm. And then I uh, I didn't get the job initially, and then the head coach gave me an uh, internship there. 
He was like, hey, this is hourly basis. Do you want to do this or not? We'll find out. And I was checking classes, sitting at a study table with the boring stuff. It was, you know, babysitting these dudes. Man, I mean, yeah. these grown ass men, they yeah. need to babysit. And I was also away from my family for six months. Damn. So I was like, man, I don't know, is this what I want to do? But uh, that kind of kickstarted everything. And then I became a GA the year after that, which was 2020, which is COVID year. But I'll tell you, man, that NCAA, that's a different game, Moose. It's a different game in terms of I'm big on my family. And yeah. you want to talk about mental health, Deuce? They need to talk about the mental health of uh, coaches in college specifically. Because them dudes get no time off. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. get no time off. So yeah. if this is the first time somebody's saying it, that needs to be addressed is the mental health of these coaches. Because there's a lot of them. Marriages aren't stable. Families aren't stable. Put together, constantly moving. On top of that, they got to recruit. Then you got the transfer portal. All that into consideration made me want to leave the game in, in college. And so Brandon Staley, who was the head coach of the Chargers, when he got the job at the head, uh, with the Chargers, mm -hmm. we connected in 2017. He became the uh, edge coach for the Bears. So we crossed paths there. Man, I shot him a text. I told him I'm a GA University of Washington, but I would love for an opportunity in the NFL because this ain't it. Yeah. You know, this ain't it. Man, yeah. I want to tell you, you got to recruit. Oh, you can't go to sleep if, uh, let's say, you know, DJ, we're on the lay. You trying to recruit? Oh, so if he's on on campus on a random Friday, you gotta pull up. You gotta pull up. Yeah. Jeez, him and his brother, like, cause you want him. You want Nico? Yeah. You know, when you want Madden, like, you gotta pull up. Yeah. And, cause you gotta impress them. But hey, the effects of that is like, okay, they play quarterback, but you got three quarterbacks on your team. But what are you gonna do with those guys? Damn. So you gotta recruit them too, and they yeah. in your building. And then I got three kids. So there is no balance as a coach in there. So for me, it was like, I got to try to try a different route. Yeah. And the NFL provided that its opportunity then with Brandon Staley. So appreciate Brandon Staley for that opportunity. And then I became an intern uh, with the fellowship there. I was as an intern, was, and I had to earn my way. Then got promoted the last year, uh, the last two years. And so that's kind of a long story then, but uh, – to get to where I am now, but man, I've always wanted to be a coach. And I obviously I always loved the game of football. I got good at it and wanted to give back as much as I can. So that's kind of a long ass story. But man, that was that was it. That was man. it. I always wanted to how be. how is it, you know, being a coach, you know, being able to um to pretty much coach and, and train and, and help out your, your peers, you know, because this you you were just with them not yeah. too long ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like how how was that transition of, yeah. of working with, with 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 fellas you've already worked with Man. at a different for something different? Yeah, that's that's a good question, bro. Cause for me it wasn't hard. Like when I was playing, I used to love like when the rookies come in. Cause that was my opportunity to coach them. Mm. Like, cause let me this be real. Like when the when the rookies come in. But it was, our number will go from like four to like 10, just like that. But it was only one coach. So there's only one linebacker coach. So he couldn't coach them because he had to spend more time investing with the starters. Right. He was making seven million a year, eight million a year. So he was locked into them. And I was always with the rookies. Like, hey, you know, this is how we did it. This is what helped me. And then we try to help them as much as possible. So, like, I always took that, uh, that time to kind of help those guys. So it wasn't hard for me to go from that to being a coach because I was kind of doing it at the same time. Uh, that was my nickname anyway. Hey, Coach Timu here. Like, hey, Coach Timu when I was <laughs> yeah. playing. Yeah. And so, like, I always embraced that. So it wasn't hard. But now it, dude, it's, it is a little different when, like, you're coaching a player. And he's like, Khalil Max is 32. I'm not saying I'm coaching him, but I'm on a coaching staff. And then if he asks questions, like, it, it dude feels like, damn, like, what's up, what's he Yeah. Doing? <laughs> You know, he'd be asking certain questions or, like, there are players that are older than me or whatnot. So, there's that kind of uniqueness. But I feel like I relate to them a little bit better. You That's know what I mean? You That's have awesome. a youth on the staff. They can connect with you. Uh, somebody who's played before, like, because there's a different type of conversation versus uh, the actual coach where it's like, no, no, I expect you to do it. Like, you're supposed to do it like this. And it's like, hey, man, yeah. such and such did it this way, so maybe this helps. Um, and it's just to kind of help, you know, with the blind spots of the actual coaches you're doing it. And then just try to, you know, be be a source for somebody else. You know what I mean? So, Man. bro, I, I feel like we got a I got a chance to really dive into your life and and all your experiences. <laughs> but like, looking back at 
looking back at the young John Timu middle school, right? Elementary, Pop Warner days, right? Did yeah. looking back at that kid to where you you've come now, do you ever just look back and just just sit back and, and just think about how far you came? Uh man, sometimes like we always come to Long Beach every, you know, such and such weekend. So I try to drive around like, damn, yeah. I do get those moments of reminiscent. Uh, but then you get that like, man, we got a long way to go. We still got yeah. a long way to go. You know what I'm saying? But I do try to embrace, you know, the upbringings, the city, the people, and, and drive around and just kind of embrace that. Because that's, like you said, man, like when it hits you, you be like, damn. One, you be like, man, I'm old as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that's first hand, for sure. For yeah. sure. But then you be like, man, you ain't even that old, bro. Yeah. Like you still, because you, you still got, if you got a growth mindset, you realize, man, you got a long way to go. For sure. And for so, sure. you know, that's why, uh, you know, me and my wife and, and that teacher, Connie Grenier, my eighth grade teacher, like we we started our, our Timu Foundation to kind of push forward and make our youth in our city timeless. Because, mm. like, it was like, man, you know what? Let's write, If we were to write a letter to ourselves back then, what would we do? And then after we put a pen to paper, all right, they stop talking about it, man. Let's do just, it. Let's do it, yeah. man. You know, just, just similar to what y'all got going on here, man. It's like, you know, we start off with the iPhone and, yeah. you know, start off as an idea, the iPhone, connect, and then yep. boom, let's let's make it happen. So, uh, Hey, man, shout out to the Timu Foundation, man. Yeah, if you don't nah, know what sure. that is, man, I know you have an event coming up soon, right? We do, man. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. So, yep. we do July 1st, okay. July 1st at Long Beach, Jordan. Uh, we're having a football camp. It's free for the youth. But it isn't a Jordan event. It's a community event, so we invite uh, anybody to come, check it out, and, you know, pull up and send some positive vibes yeah. to the youth, man. We're trying to get back to to the our kids, and what I know best right now is football. But our foundation is looking to serve um, our youth in the city, uh, our teachers, support them in, in any way we can, and then as much as we can, our coaches. Um, so, uh, man, appreciate y'all giving this outlet. So, yeah. Team yeah, Foundation is looking to do Team that, man. Foundation. We're trying to, we're trying to, to serve up, man. We're going to have to pull up the pads show. on, bro. See what you see. What you <laughs> yeah, got, I'm, I'm good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use this guy. <laughs> Hey, look, I'm gonna hey, take look, pictures. I got it. Real, real. <laughs> hey, he's still like, he can play, man. He out here. Hey, look, I'm gonna uh, end on this one. Uh, something that I was thinking about on the way here is if you could give advice to any aspiring athlete uh, who, who wants to play football, um, maybe they're already playing and maybe they have ambitions to go D1 or go to the league. Um, but you, you, you've, you've, got, it's, you, you've been through the highs and lows. You know what I'm saying? You've seen the yeah. cutthroat side of the business. Um, and now you're in a position where you can help mold players from a coaching standpoint. But what advice would you give to anybody who's starting their journey on football or yeah, maybe a, in the process? That's a real question right there, man. So when we started our foundation, like our slogan is like, it only takes one drop to cause a ripple effect to change the world. And, man, you just got to be that one. And there's three people in this room right here standing that are the one that was just like, let's see what happens. You know what I'm saying? So once you, once you've already made that decision that you're gonna be one man, and after that, it's by any means. And what I mean by any means, like, so when I was undrafted in the NFL, they always say be available, dog. Like it ain't, but like, yeah, he's faster than you, but if his ass is always taped up, hurt, man, he's useless. And no offense to whoever that was, but it's like, all right. And so you got to have the willpower to oversee. Whatever you want, like whatever to oversee any kind of distraction to get whatever you want. Cause once you have that mindset, it'll keep you focused and nothing else will keep will get you stray from what you actually want. So you gotta have the willpower to kind of with you guys to be a trailblazer. And Oops, when I say it's gonna be hard, man, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. Cause if you're the first one to do it, you ain't gonna have no guidance. Mm. You know what I mean? If you're a trailblazer, you ain't going to have no kind of guidance in terms of the people that are next to you to relate to. So you're going to have to figure it out on your own and embrace the suffering uh, because that's what it's going to take. And you're going to suffer and you're going to suffer and you might fall a couple of times. You're going to fail. And the, the good thing about it, and if somebody don't tell you, I'm here to remind you, like, it's all good. I tell you, it's all good because at the end of it, it'll be worth it. And so when you're able to go back and tell about your sufferings, man, you're going to save a bunch of people. And so if you can kind of uh, also see the end 
um, see from the end and work your way back. Um, that helps out too. Keeps you a perspective on what's actually important. Know that that what you got going on is worth it. It's worth fighting for. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you are the one, man. Just like y'all are. So, and then one man, just want to shout out to y'all. I appreciate y'all for having me. This is a dope ass show, man. I'm telling you, love. This is a dope Thank show, you, man. man. I'm honored love, to be man. here, man. So man. appreciate y'all. Shout out to shout out to John Timu, man, and shout out to. Your foundation, all, all the work you're doing with it. Um, yeah. July 1st at Long Beach, Jordan. Pull football, up. Football, football, football camp. For we going to be there. Here. You pull up. <laughs> yeah, man. So shout out to you, man. And shout out to the coach. Everybody making moves out there. All the yes, trailblazers. Sir. You know what I'm saying? We all win. Dante, Shane, we out of here, Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I got one more thing to okay. say. I got one more thing to say. Before we, we talk about all this football, man, I actually just had a celebration of life this past Monday. I just wanted to shout out. My Uso, I love you, Sefa. Long live Sefa. Man. You know what it is, man. Rest love. in peace. Rest love, in peace, man. I met him a couple of times, man. We all win, baby. We all win. Shout out to y'all, man. Yeah. Well, we out here.